Hi everyone. I'm hoping that I'm now live, just waiting for my screen to catch up. Okay, I hope this is working because I can only see the Zoom screen. Uh, so I may not be able to see comments. Let me just see if I can go back to, yeah, that's gonna be tricky. Okay, let's hope for the best. Um, and I'm just going to record if I can. There we go. Okay, thanks for joining me for this uh, Heal the Wor World Summit presentation. And my presentation is on healing our animal partners. My name's Tricia from Equine Energetics, and I'm an animal communicator and healer. And so this is a, a topic that's close to my heart. For most of us right now in the Southern Hemisphere, the devastation of the Australian bushfires is at the forefront of our minds. And naturally for animal lovers like us, our hearts are being wrenched with the images and statistics that are being presented around injuries and numbers of animals killed or affected. So I'm going to touch on that and ways that you can help, as well as the ways that we can help to heal our domestic pets and other animals. So first up, a little bit about me. I specialize in horses, though I do work with all animals as an animal communicator. Horse people tend to have lots of other animals. And as you can no doubt hear, I'm Scottish, but I live in New Zealand and I work remotely using just a photograph. I've been passionate about horses all my life, starting with riding lessons as a kid and finally buying my first horse myself when I was 21. Before long, I was teaching and training and competing in Western riding, as you can see in the middle picture. When I bred my first horse, and that's her in that picture, she led me down a path of learning how to do things differently, starting with listening to her instead of making her do stuff. I really had to get out of my own head and pay attention to what she actually wanted. That led me to learning Reiki, trying to meditate, and learning various modalities of equine bodywork and biomechanics. We moved from Scotland to New Zealand 14 years ago, and I traveled all over New Zealand and Australia teaching horse and rider biomechanics. Then I was invited to a meditation group, a long established one with really powerful energy. And suddenly I could meditate and suddenly a whole new world of experiences that I could only have dreamt of previously was opened up to me. Including ways of having deeper connections with horses with animal communication. So I started practicing my developing skills for a couple of years on clients' horses with their per permission and their curiosity, of course. I developed my own protocol and then I switched full time to animal communication. My point of difference is that I include healing and energy balancing in every session that I do. So both animals and their owners get more than me just answering their questions. I like working this way because I really know that I'm making a difference. Occasionally someone will ask me if I could do a cheaper session where they could just ask a couple of questions. But honestly, I rarely come upon a horse or animal that doesn't need some sort of balancing and healing. 
and I know that I can help them much more this way. Just this morning, I received an email from a recent client saying, Tricia, it's like I have a new horse. She was thrilled that her horse was behaving much better and was calmer. And I don't think you would get that um, transformation just by answering questions. It's from the energy work and the healing. So that's me. What about you? Why are you here? Why does this topic interest you? It could be that you really wish you could help or heal your own animals. Maybe you'd like to be able to help injured animals that you come across or friends' pets. And probably right now in the Southern Hemisphere, you're desperate to send love and healing and make some sort of difference to the animals that have been affected by the bushfires. There are different ways that we can offer healing and it might depend on the species. What we can do with or for domesticated animals or those that we have an actual relationship with might be quite different from what we would do where there's no relationship or where the animal or species is wild. So let's look at this step by step. The first step is why do they need healing? If you think about your own animals first, you can possibly specifically see or already know about an issue that requires healing. And if that's the case, you can be much more specific about how you go about it. So it might be that they have an injury that you know about or they've been ill, maybe they've had surgery, maybe they're elderly and you know they just need a little extra help. With horses, I also find that they really benefit from healing of past bad experiences or trauma, and also interestingly, past life issues. Of course, there's also the possibility that you know or feel that something is wrong, but you can't identify what it is. You just know that they need or would benefit from some healing. So the next question would be who, who should do the healing? Because actually it might not be you. It might be that a professional who specializes in a certain thing would be better placed to do whatever healing your animal needs because healing doesn't necessarily just mean energy healing. You can heal animals in lots of different ways. So do think, if, especially if it's your own animal, do consider whether they need a specific professional to help them heal. It might be that they need to see the vet or a body worker might be able to help them. With horses, they might need to see a farrier, a trimmer, a dentist, maybe a homeopath, a herbalist or a nutritionist might be required. And it might be an energy worker. It might be the owner that needs to do the work. It might be you that needs to do it. It might be someone like me, an animal communicator who can home in on maybe what other people haven't been able to identify or ask the animal what's going on, how they're feeling and what they want. And with the wild animals in the bushfires, for instance, it might be that a rescue organization is who is best placed to organize or give healing to the animals. So the juicier stuff is how we give healing. If you're actually going to offer or do some healing, remember to always ask permission. This is really important. Before you do anything else, ask permission. If it's your own animal, 
you can ask them verbally or in your mind. And make sure that you pay attention to any kind of answer that you receive from them. If you hear no or feel a no answer, please stop. You can always try again later. If you know who the owner of the animal is, if it's not yours, please ask them for permission. Personally, I won't send healing to an other person's um, pets or animals without it. Wild animals are a little bit different, but I still always ask the universe for permission to proceed. You could visualize the the group of animals, whether it's koalas, kangaroos, or even just thinking in your mind, having the intent, um, all the animals currently affected by the bushfires in Australia. And you have that picture in your mind and ask permission of all of them. But remember to pay attention to it. If you do get a no, please honour it. You can always try another time. I don't often get a no these days, but when I do, I find that if I stop and go back again later, the next time I try, all is usually fine. It's as if the animal just needed a little extra time to get used to the idea. Remember, especially with animals you don't know or wild animals, they don't know you. They don't know your or recognize your energy when you're approaching them. So please ask permission. It's a way of introducing yourself and it's polite. <laughs> I'll talk a little later about actual energy healing. But first, remember, there are lots of other ways that we can help animals to heal. So if we um, look at your own animals first, or domestic animals. The first thing to think about is their happiness. Is your pet actually happy? And if not, what can you do about that? My questions would be, are you listening to your pet? Are you observing them, noticing their likes and dislikes, their habits, their opinions? And are you communicating with them? You'd be surprised how powerful it is to just tell them verbally what's going to happen next. Oh, I'm taking you to the vet today because blah, blah, blah. Here's what's going to happen and then I'll bring you home again. Or whatever it is, just tell them. Give them a heads up. I find myself in animal communication sessions a lot of times when I ask if the animal is aware of what's going on, they're not. Owners just assume that they are, <laughs> but they, not, they aren't necessarily. So tell them and listen to their opinions. With health, remember that it could be that the best way you can heal your animal is to look at their diet. Maybe that needs a tweak. Look at their exercise. Are they getting enough or too much? Or are they getting the right kind of exercise for their health? And looking at their general lifestyle, how might that be affecting them? Does that need changing at all? And remember to be with your animals. Show them love. Tell them you love them. Notice them. It's easy to, with um, I think dogs and cats, especially to, they're such a fixture in our lives that we almost forget about them. We go through our routine, but maybe we're not actually spending quality time with them. So notice their interests. And something you could try is if, you're, if you have a practice of meditation, you could try meditating in their presence and just see what happens. 
do they come closer to you or do they leave the room? It's all useful information. And the other thing you can do with your own animals is make a heart connection with them. And I'm going to lead you through a little exercise here. What I would recommend is that, unless you happen to have your pet in the room with you right now, just listen for now and come back to this recording of this um, presentation later, find this spot, this slide, and uh, listen to and do the exercise with your animal then. So listen now and get the, the gist of, of what it is and then replay it later and do it with your animal. So I'm going to do the exercise with you now. <clears throat> you're going to make sure that you're comfortable with your feet flat on the floor and your eyes closed. And take a few deep breaths, allowing your energy to settle. And your body to release any tension. Feel your feet on the floor. And visualize little roots growing out of your feet, burrowing down into the earth below and grounding you firmly with Mother Earth. Coming up to the top of your head, your crown chakra. Visualize it opening like a lotus flower. And beaming white light from the top of your head in a strong column up into the universe above you and connecting you with all that is. Now visualize your pet or your animal. You might be sitting in the same room as them or in the paddock with your horse. You may have your dog or cat next to you, in which case you can have a hand on them if you wish. But picture your animal in your minds, in your third eye, in your mind. And in your mind, I want you to ask them permission to send them love. Is it okay for me to send you love right now? Notice the response. If you're not sure or it feels like it might be a no, you can just stop for now and try again another time. Now I want you to visualize surrounding yourself with pink energy. If you did get a no before, notice if that makes any difference to your animal and how they feel about your presence. Then bring your attention to your heart or your heart chakra. See it filled with strong pink energy, love. See it expanding. See that love, that pink, it multiplying, growing. And when it feels strong, visualize sending it all the way over to the heart or heart chakra of your animal. 
you might see it as little love hearts going over from your heart to theirs. You might see a channel of or column of pink light and visualize it infusing their heart. And you can even surround them with that pink energy. Notice how you feel and notice if you're getting any information from your animal, whether it's words, visuals, feelings. And you can sit like this for as long as it feels comfortable. But even just a couple of minutes is fine. Then see that connection dissolving as you come back to your own body. Back into your own heart. Back into your feet. Wriggle your toes and fingers. And when you're ready, open your eyes. I'd love to know how that felt for you. And if you practice this again with other animals, do let me know. You can either do a hashtag replay in the comments here and tell me what happened. And feel free to um, message me and let me know how you got on. I don't know about you, but I feel very zen now. <laughs> but we better finish this presentation. <laughs> so that's a really easy and powerful way that you can send love to your animals or any animal. And you might think, well, that's not healing, but it so is. If you did that every day for your animals, you will be also sending them healing and you'll be improving the connection and the communication between you and your relationship. Now, with wild animals, I'll just go back, with wild animals, it might be slightly different. Um, it might be that the best way you can help wild animals or animals affected by the bushfire, for instance, is by making a donation to a charity or a rescue or, or organization. It might be that the best way you can help them heal is by supporting their habitat. <coughs> Excuse me. So being aware of your buying choices, for instance. You can use this exercise and send them pink by all means. And you could send them healing. You can do that using the same um, little routine that we just did, the same exercise, but instead visualize or have the intent of sending healing to the animal or animals. For me, healing energy is more of a, a warm, creamy, yellowish, creamy yellowish color. <laughs> uh, so you can visualize that color and visualize it either covering burnt paws or covering, covering entire areas, whatever feels good to you. Going a little bit deeper, here are some other ideas that you can experiment, particularly with your own animals. It, whether you are already um, using Reiki or any kind of energy healing or not, you could practice feeling your, your own animal's um, energy with your hand or with a pendulum, if you're familiar with pendulums at all. You can do it 
in direct contact if you want to, or you can do it at a little bit of a distance and it might only be this much. Um, that's probably two or three inches. But notice what feedback you're getting from the animal and whether they prefer you to be touching or not, or at more of a distance or less of a distance. If you reach a place where the energy seems really strong, or with your pendulum, if it's spinning in a negative direction, stay there until the energy clears or balances. Listen to your gut and pay attention to the animal if they're moving away or getting restless or whatever, you know, don't seem to be enjoying it, stop or move on. Another really good exercise, if, and I'll try and remember to put a link to this in the comments, um, particularly if you're a horse person, but you could do this with all animals, is doing a bladder meridian um, uh, touch exercise with your animals, where you slowly and mindfully run your hand from the uh, pole of the, the horse or the top crown chakra down the spine all the way down to the back legs very slowly and mindfully so following the bladder meridian um, and that can really help to clear and balance their energy and remember the point of that is that healing can't start until the energy is in balance Another thing you could try is calling your, your own animals into your meditation. So rather than you visualizing them and kind of doing stuff um, to or for them, actually ask them if they would like to join you in your meditation. Ask permission to work with them and notice anything they share with you, anything you see, hear or feel. It might be words, pictures, emotions, anything that might give you a clue about what's going on with your own animal. And you could even visualize yourself healing the injury as if your hands were actually in place and let the animal guide your hands. So again, if you try any of these, I'd love to know how you get on. With wild animals, obviously you're not going to be able to touch them and um, connecting with them remotely is going to be a little different because you don't have a relationship with them. So something you could do is amplify the energy. Join up with like-minded friends, animal lovers from online groups or others interested in meditation or practicing healing. If you've ever felt the difference between meditating on your own compared to meditating in a group, you'll know how much more powerful your efforts can be when the energy is amplified. Just decide up front what your plan is. You could either have someone doing a guided meditation or just agree in advance what your goal is. It might be as simple as visualizing the animals affected by the fires in Australia and see a wave of healing covering them. You could even try working in a group like this to access amplified energy with friends to send strong healing energy to each other's pets. So to summarize, my biggest tip is to send love. Send the color pink to them. If you feel like you're getting blocked in any way or the animal is saying no, just surround yourself in pink. Present yourself as um, um, a, a being of love, something that is non-confrontational, um, that you're not going to make them do anything, you're not pushing anything on them. All you're doing is offering love. 
those of you that are into energy work and anything spiritual, you know the power of love. So um, the more love we can send to animals that are in distress or injured, the better. That's um, the simplest and possibly best form of healing that you can send to them. Okay, I, I can't see the comments here because I'm on the Zoom screen. So I'm gonna check back to see if there's any comments on um, the presentation and I'll answer them in the comments. Hope that's okay. Uh, I'd love to hear any questions. And if you watch the replay, just do hashtag replay and I'll catch up with you. Um, I've put in the description of the live um, how you can access the freebie that I'm offering for the summit, which is um, uh, one sign up to add to access all of my other uh, training videos, animal communication and healing um, videos. So you're very welcome to access all of them. I think there are four different ones. Um, and there are links there for how you can contact me um, or uh, if you'd like to join us in my closed group, it would love, be lovely to see you there too. I hope that has been helpful for you. I'll look forward to hearing from you and um, I'll go and enjoy the, the rest of the summit now.